Hello everyone, welcome to GK Today 2.0. This is Arzu Kakkar and in this particular session, we'll have a look over today's current affairs. Before moving forward, this session, let me tell you, contains those questions that are a part of your daily 20 MCQ series that you can get from GK Today Android application app. Apart from these 20 MCQ series, you can get more than 500 plus questions there every month. You have category wise compilations, you have category wise compilation questions. So do refer to GK Today Android application app. With this, let us start our very first question. So as you can see, the first question is associated with the report. The name of the report is Climate Transparency Report. So according to this report, just give me a minute. Yeah. So as per the Climate Transparency Report 2022, which country was the most affected by income losses from heat-related labor capacity reduction? So this is talking about your climate emergency and energy crisis. So this report is giving a link between these two as well. Climate trans According to this Climate Transparency Report, the country which was most affected by income loss from heat uh, related labor capacity reduction is none other than our India. So option C is the right answer here. Let us have a look over climate transparency report. So what is climate transparency report? This report basically is the world's most comprehensive review. Comprehensive review. A review of what? A review of G20 countries climate action. Every country have, have basically what, what steps they are taking. So have to make a complete review of their climate action. Uh, our agenda or the, the whole sole purpose of net zero emission country. Right. So their transition to what, what steps they are taking. A complete review of that. So that is what climate transparency is all about. This report is all about. If they are asking you the theme of this report, that is G20 response to energy crisis, right? Critical for 1.5 degrees Celsius. So this report is prepared by, this can also be asked. So it is prepared by the experts from 16 partner organizations who are making G, uh, basically the majority of your G20 countries right so this is it and uh, if if talking about india let us have a point of view from indian perspective as well so as uh, called basically from the indian perspective we have seen an increase in temperature a global mean temperature increase we have seen in 2017 to 2021 the summer temperatures experienced by the people average is 0 0.4 degree celsius higher than what was in 19, 1986 to 2005 which was 0 0.3 degree celsius and with this increase in temperature india have suffered an income loss also this number is very important it is 159 billion dollars very important this can be asked so india suffered an income loss of 1.5 billion dollars 5.4 percent of the gdp in services in manufacturing in agriculture and construction sectors due to extreme heat right so this was your climate transparency report that was all about it moving to the next question next question is talking about a conference that is heads of missions conference which city is the host of this conference which is organized by Ministry of External Affairs? Before moving forward, let me tell you the very important point here, Ministry of External Affairs. So it can be asked either ways, which ministry is associated or uh, basically organized this Heads of Mission Conference, that is Ministry of external affairs now where was this conference held which city is the host of this conference it is kevadia so where it is in gujarat they will not they are not giving you option like gujarat so they are basically one step ahead so you have to be one step ahead please do remember ki we have to go one step deep with respect to cities and districts right so this conference basically was the 10th uh, one at kevadia 
it is being organized by ministry of external affairs so what is heads of conference all about so basically this conference brings around 118 heads of indian missions the ambassadors high the high commissioners all all together from all over the board and the agenda the meeting the discussion was over geopolitics geopolitical geoeconomic environment correct connectivity about india's foreign policy so these all are the center of discussion and the priority as well there, there were other missions that were also launched there that is like mission life lifestyle for the environment we'll have a complete look over it so when when i'll talk about this in a, in a next in a new question right so moving on to the next one this question is regarding an aircraft that is htt40 now what what htt40 is so before go, telling what htt40 is question is asking which organization developed the indigenous trainer aircraft name htt40 which was recently unveiled where defense expo if you remember we have covered it already twice every time when it is in news i have discussed so now it's your responsibility to go and have a quick revision of it htt 40 is an indigenous trainer aircraft the organization that developed is hal hindustan aeronautics limited so option b is the correct answer so here you can see the picture of it as well right so as it is basically it comprises of 60 percent in-house parts in collaboration with the other private industry it it gives you a glimpse of atmanirbharta right it it is a symbol of that but also in addition to it it has a potential for export also that is what our prime our prime minister says now if i talk about it this htt 40 is a trainer aircraft please do remember that it is a trainer aircraft and it is developed as per the requirements of iaf for all those who are the new pilots so so as to provide them uh, the training before they are allowed to use more advanced one so they they will be given training with this one and uh, where was it launched it can be asked during the 12th Def, uh, defense expo it held in gandhi nagar please do remember that and if you talk about maximum speed of it it is 450 km per hour if you talk about uh, the maximum range the maximum distance it is 1000 km right so these are certain facts that you can be asked and now you know that Moving on to the next question, that is a prize. The name of the prize is Sakharov Prize. The European Parliament annual Sakharov Prize. So it is European Parliament, right? Not Indian. The European Parliament's annual. Every every term, every term has its meaning. It is an annual Sakharov Prize. It is awarded to the people of which country? This time, 2022, this prize is awarded to the people of Ukraine. Option C is the correct answer why because uh, so as to honor them uh, for their fight against russian invasion when there was russia ukraine invasion so this prize is for the freedom of thought to the people of ukraine and in this prize the award money is fifty thousand euros right and it is distributed to the representatives of ukrainian civil society so yes uh, do remember sakharov prize which is given to the uh, ukraine the people of Ukraine, uh, how they dealt with it, uh, their, their fight against this Russian invasion, right, by European Parliament. Please do remember that as well. Okay, who has been elected as the first known Gandhi president of the Indian National Congress Party in 24 years? So basically, from 1998. After 1998, this is the time after 24 years, the party is getting a known Gandhi president. Not, uh, you have to now come up with the answer. So the answer is, who has been elected as the first known Gandhi president? Malikarjun Kharge. Options A is the correct answer. So please do remember that. And the personality you can see here, the picture. So Malikarjun Kharge has been elected as the first known Gandhi president of the Indian National Congress after 24 years. Right. So it is not a presidential election of the country. It is basically an election within the party itself. And uh, it, it is after 24 years that Indian National Congress is having a member, a president who is from uh, who is not from a 
Gandhian family and uh, the personality what defeated the other candidate the candidate was Shashi Tharoor you can remember that also by certain votes number of more number of votes will not be asked in your exam but do at least have a general information ki the other side the candidate was Shashi Tharoor and uh, but Malikarjun Kharge received uh, basically uh, win this and is the president of Indian National Congress now Moving on to the next question that is regarding national credit framework. Which ministry launched the draft? It is a draft of national credit framework. So sounding like finance ministry from the credit term, but actually it is not. If you are going with option B, ministry of education, then you are absolutely correct. Option B is the right answer. So having a look over national credit framework, the Ministry of Education, the Minister uh, Dharmendra Pradhan launched this draft. The draft is about national credit framework that talks about credit system. Now, what is this credit system? I hope that you all have an idea that when uh, in the National Institutes of Open Schooling, we have already this uh, credit system followed where there is a choice based credit system and uh, after getting a degree, it is prescribed in the term of number of credits that is to be earned by the students but now the concept in this draft is to take it to the school students as well right in the higher education apart from open learning as well so how it will be proceeded the credits will be given based upon their learnings based upon <coughs> their extracurricular activities and these credit will be deposited to a bank so after the student's registration there will be a bank account also that will be opened the name is academic bank of credits abc account will be opened and the credits will be deposited there so what is a funda what is a need but what what, <clears throat> what what is the purpose behind it the purpose is key whenever see what what may happen there are dropouts we all know that so whenever a child or a student dropouts in, in case of any XYZ reason, he or she can once again start its uh, education from where the person left, where from where the student left because after is credit. So from where their credit were, so they can move on now after the dropout as well. So it will provide the uh, flexibility anytime, anywhere learning and re-enter into the education system. So they can enter into the mainstream education uh, the, basically from the deposits that they have in their uh, uh, in those accounts from their deposits they can move ahead from where they left right so it will uh, basically provide the multiple entries exit and entry framework you can say and uh, ensuring flexibility so national credit framework will integrate this credits earned through the school education through higher education so it is bringing uh, all these in under in, in the one umbrella and like like skills like vocational and skill education so all this will be given the credits now so the students learning can be given the credit this is what the draft says till now moving on to the next one who topped it will give here in india philanthropy list who topped this list the owner of HCL technology. So this is a very big hint that I am giving. Now to, it is very simple for you to guess the answer. The name of the personality Shiv Nadar. Option B is the correct answer. So you, let us have a look over the personality. So here is the picture. HCL founder Shiv Nadar topped the most generous person in the country donating 3 crore per day. This is the number. Yes, this is the number. The 77 year old businessman has reclaimed as the India's most generous person. The after uh, basically donating, donating every year, you can say three crore per day is donated and the annual donation is 1161 crore. At the second number, who is at the second number? Azim Premji. Vipro's Azim Premji who donates annual donation of 484 crore. You, you might be uh having a basically a thought ki who the richest man Gautam Adani how much uh he donates or what is the rank so the rank is seventh in the list and donation is 190 crore right so this is the case now moving on to the next question who has been na uh, named as a new revenue secretary as of the October 2022 
संजय मल्होत्रा सो ऑप्शन बी हेयर इज द राइट आंसर हु इज द न्यू रिवेन्यू सेक्रेटरी सेक्रेटरी इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज संजय मल्होत्रा हैज बीन री रीनेम्ड एज द न्यू रिवेन्यू सेक्रेटरी राइट सो दिस इज द पिक्चर ऑफ द पर्सनालिटी यू कैन हैव अ लुक देन मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट टॉक्स अबाउट विच पेमेंट बैंक जस्ट गिव मी अ सेकेंड येस विच पेमेंट बैंक हैज पार्टनर्ड विद रिजर्व बैंक इनोवेशन हब फॉर इनोवेशन इन फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स प्रोडक्ट्स एंड सर्विसेज आई टॉक अबाउट आर बी आई एच डू वेट फॉर टू टू थ्री सेकेंड्स बिकॉज दिस विल दिस विल बी द टाइम दैट यू विल बी टेकिंग ओनली फॉर आंसर सो द पेमेंट बैंक दैट हैज पार्टनर्ड विद आर बी आई एच इज नन अदर देन इंडिया पोस्ट पेमेंट्स बैंक ऑप्शन सी इज द राइट आंसर सो वट दिस आर बी आई एच आर बी आई एच इज रिजर्व बैंक इनोवेशन हब दैट बेसिकली टॉक्स अबाउट सस्टेनेबल मैनर वट इज दिस सस्टेनेबल मैनर आई कंप्लीट इट डोंट जस्ट डोंट डम्प अ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड टॉक यू ओके दिस इज फॉर अ शॉर्ट टाइम एंड वी आर गोन डू दिस दैट नॉट लाइक दैस इन अ सस्टेनेबल मैनर यू वॉन्ट टू नर्चर द financial services you want to make sure that there are there are world class financial innovations in the financial sector so as to encourage these this innovation innovation in financial sector we have this hub they want this innovation slowly in a very sustainable manner so that so that low income population in the country can also avail the excess of products financial products and financial services so financial inclusion being the underlying theme there the agenda so this is the objective behind the establishment of rbih that is reserve bank innovation hub that talks about innovation that talks about uh, innovation in a sustainable manner in the financial sector right then moving on to the last question when when is world osteoporosis day observed every year yes when is this day observed when is the world osteoporosis day observed it is observed on 20th of october option c here is the correct answer so osteoporosis is basically released to the weakening of bones i i i I'll not go deep into it you can just have a idea like that ki when with the age also when with increasing age the bones get weak right there are there are fractures into it so that is regard that is one such aspect of osteoporosis so for, make sure that you have a strong bone and uh, you you basically you have you take sunlight vitamin d from there right so osteoporosis is basically uh, the day is observed with the aim of raising awareness about this prevention about the diagnosis and the treatment of osteoporosis theme is very important step up for born health this is the theme of world osteoporosis day now with this let us have a look over today's revision category and we'll have certain questions and we'll revise them all those questions that are important from your current affairs and the agenda the revision here will be starting from your conference right so all important conference that were in news we'll have a look over it which city is the host of conference on international day for universal access to information that is teshkant next comes a world conference unesco mondia cult 2022 the city which city is the host of this conference mexico conference on confidence building measures and interaction in asia submit this country the country which is the host is kazakhstan global fintech conference which indian city is the host of this conference delhi not at all mumbai national conference of tourism ministers of states and union territories which is the venue of this conference dharamshala right do remember important angan 2022 conference which institution organized this conference bee bureau of energy efficiency 
ऑल इंडिया ऑफिशियल लैंग्वेज कॉन्फ्रेंस दैट वॉज हेल्ड इन ट्वेंटी विच सिटी इज द होस्ट ऑफ दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस वी आर गोइंग टू गुजरात बिकॉज सूरत इज द सिटी दैट इज द होस्ट ऑफ दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन ग्रीन शिप रिसाइकलिंग एंड व्हीकल स्क्रैपिंग विथ सिटी इज द होस्ट ऑफ दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस अगेन वी आर एज वी आर इन गुजरात नो दैट इज वाई गांधी नगर नाउ वी आर शिफ्टिंग टू फॉर दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस राइट सो डू रिमेंबर दैट दिस इज जस्ट वन वे सो दैट यू कैन रिटेन इट मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन सस्टेनेबल कोस्टल मैनेजमेंट इन इंडिया नाउ वी आर नॉट इन गुजरात वी आर एंट्रिंग टू उड़ीसा सो उड़ीसा इज द स्टेट दैट इज द होस्ट ऑफ कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन सस्टेनेबल कोस्टल मैनेजमेंट राइट विच सिटी इज द होस्ट ऑफ नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन एग्रीकल्चर फॉर रबी कैंपेन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री वी आर मूविंग टू नाउ द कैपिटल ऑफ इंडिया न्यू डेली सो दिस इज द प्लेस वेर द यूनियन टेरिटरी और यू कैन से दिटी विच इज द होस्ट ऑफ द कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन एग्रीकल्चर फॉर रबी कैंपेन National Conference of State Corporation Ministers. This conference was held in India, where, as we are in New Delhi, that is why we will stay in New Delhi for our last conference also. An interesting one, I think so. What do you think? Anyways, moving on to the next question. This question is regarding some estimates in agriculture. The, these are very important. You you can see in your previous year questions, uh, the stuff is very important and they are directly asked. You have to remember certain figures. Moving on to the very first question now. As per the fourth advance estimates, what is the estimated production of major crops during twenty twenty one twenty twenty two? Three one five point seven two million tons. Moving on. The highest damage of crop area due to natural calamities has been recorded in which Indian state in 2022-2023. So, because of natural calamities, which is that Indian state that recorded the highest damage of crop area? It is Assam. Pink bollworm infests which of the following crop? Cotton. Carmax, which was seen in news, is a new variety of which crop? Rice. As per the third advance estimates of the production of agricultural crops, what is the estimate production of food grains? So, it, it, the numbers are basically depending upon fourth advance estimates, third advance estimates. So that is why please do have a look. Final estimates are regarding in horticulture crops, in food grains, the major crops, right? So everything is different. So here, as per the third advance estimate, it is three one four point five one million tons. Kadiri lepakshi. is a variety variety of which crop groundnut tea mosquito bugs are said to predominantly attack which crop cashew food grain production target that is announced for the crop year 2022 2023 is 328 million tons okay there is a ministry that issued an order order is to Exempt certain types of genome edited crops from rules applicable on GM crops. So, which is the ministry that issued Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change? The last question of this category, not of this session. As per the final estimates of twenty 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 one of area and production of horticulture crops, what was the total production? It is three thirty four point six zero million tons, right? now moving on to your miscellaneous category miscellaneous questions so the very first question is as per the cabinet approval what is that percentage what percentage of project cost is provided as uniform fiscal support a support to set up the semiconductor flaps it is 50% okay as per the, these are very important ho oh, please do have a look they are very important they can be directly asked Asian Development Outlook update. As per this, what is the twenty twenty two twenty twenty three growth projection for India's economy? It is seven point zero percent. Which country has launched the world's first Chita rehabilitation project? None other than our India. What is the name of the third sail frigate built as a part of Project Seventeen A, which was recently launched? It is. It is your homework. So I'll. I'll be asked. I'll be expecting the answers in the comment section for this question. The Union Cabinet has approved the implementation of second phase of which metro project at a cost of 
वन नाइन फाइव सेवन करोड इट इज कोची मूविंग ऑन देर इज अ कंट्री दैट इनोग्रेटेड मैत्री सुपर थर्मल पावर प्रोजेक्ट कंस्ट्रक्टेड अंडर द इंडिया कंसेशनल फाइनेंशियल स्कीम फाइनेंसिंग स्कीम सो द कंट्री दैट इनोग्रेटेड इज आर नेबर बांग्लादेश ओके प्राइम मिनिस्टर इनोग्रेटेड मैकेनाइजेशन एंड इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन प्रोजेक्ट दे आर वर्थ थर्टी एट हंड्रेड करोर इन विच सिटी बेंगलुरु एस बी आई इज सेट टू रन द प्रोजेक्ट फॉर डिजिटलाइजेशन ऑफ किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड इन विच स्टेट मध्य प्रदेश तमिलनाडु दिस इज योर होमवर्क सो देर आर टू क्वेश्चन नाउ एक वन इज दिस एंड दिस इज द सेकेंड वन नाबार्ड हैज अप्रूव्ड एन एलोकेशन ऑफ रुपीज टू थर्टी करोड फॉर द रूरल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट इन विच स्टेट इन मिजोरम राइट so there are two questions that are taken given as your homework and with two you have four more so total six questions are there and i will be expecting answers from everybody in the chat section do share your answers and with this i arzu kakkar sum up this session here i hope you enjoyed learning with this uh, a very best of luck everyone have a nice day do like it if you like the session and do share it do subscribe the channel as well thank you take care